So what's the last thing I want to do? I want to height normalize. I want to remove the elevations so all the points are relative to zero height. The tool for that, and that's called last height. Maybe now it's also a good time to point out every tool has a readme file. If you press that button, you get a pop-up box which just shows you the readme file. And these readme files are surprisingly useful, but for them to be useful, you do really have to read them. <laughs> and uh, often I get questions and the answer is really in the readme file. Last height computes the height above the ground points. Now some software stores the ground points to two different classes, to class number two and to class number eight where eight are the more important ground points. They are called key points. So if you have classified data sets where you have classification code number eight, then you need to select choose ground and key points and not only the ground points. Because if you have point class eight, the most important ground points are stored in eight. And if you say ground points, you're not gonna use, you will not use them. Uh, why are there key points? Well, key points were introduced to basically have less, a fewer points to describe the, the terrain. Because if you use all the points, it can be sometimes a lot of points. And some software cannot handle all the points. So the idea was, let's take a subset of all the ground points that gives you almost the same quality terrain with much fewer points. Uh, so then, uh, key points show up as red red points in uh, last view. So if you have red points showing up, you need to use this. Um, okay, if, if we want to normalize, we a simple way to normalizing is simply taking the ground points, making the tin, and then measuring how high every point is above that tin, or below. They can even be below when you have a ditch or something. And then we replace, we replace the Z coordinate with the height. And then you get a new data set which loses the elevation completely and now the elevation is always zero. At the same time we could say classify between half a meter and two meters everything as low vegetation. <coughs> or between zero, 0.1 and 0.5 it should be low. And between, uh, because we know starting at two meters, it becomes high vegetation. First, let's select the input. The input is our, our classified data from 2013. Now the output is this one tiles height. And again, I run it on all the works. So output directory last height, uh, as height. Ground points, replace that. You'll see different colors. And then run. The entire time, the entire time until now, we have always carried with us the buffers. You can still see the buffers. That's why there is this overlap. So everything we did, we did with buffers. And that's good. Also for last height. Last height, I compute the tin from the ground points. And if I don't have buffers, then the tin of the ground points will be crappy at the edges. And if the tin is crappy of the ground points, then the height I'm computing above the tin is also crappy. I make it a little bigger. Again, the heights will be crappy at the edge of the buffer. But as the last step, I'm throwing away the buffer. Hence, everything that happens that's bad will be thrown out. And that's why I carry the buffer around with me until the end. So if you have to deliver, or if you want to sort of long-term store these tiles now, the process tiles, the last step is usually to cut off the buffers. Because the classified tiles, the ones you want to keep, to say this is the classified tiles I use, uh, 
or especially if you give them away, don't give childless buffers to a customer because they don't know that they are buffers. There's no standard buffering. Usually if you, you can recreate buffers, but if you give the client childless buffers, they will use the points that are in the buffers, which are duplicated buffers, duplicated points. But duplicated points of lower quality, like the classification is of lower quality, the normalized height is of lower quality along the edges of the buffer. So the, the, the best thing to do, if you give away the points, or if you store them for a long time, remove the buffers in the final step. And uh, so we, we haven't done that yet. In our case, there's, there's a question, which one which one are the final tiles? I mean, we don't actually need to do it. Uh, are the final tiles the normalized tiles? Or are the final tiles the unnormalized tiles? Uh, usually, it will be the unnormalized tiles. Because who wants normalized LiDAR? I mean, the elevation again, yeah. But even foresters may want to know the elevation. You can always normalize them, but you can never unnormalize them because the elevation is gone. So I would always do the removal of the buffers only of those tiles that still have the elevations. Yeah. Okay, the last step would be to uh, maybe remove the buffers. I just show you how to remove the buffers, but let's remove the buffers from the classified tiles. Last style is a tool that created the buffers, and last style is a tool that removes the buffers. We want to remove the buffers from the classified tiles. So again, now we're using tiles classify as input all of those, and you see they still have their buffers. And now there's an option here, remove the buffer points. And that's it, and now we specify the output. That's just, I mean, we don't really need that. I just want to show you how to do it in case you ever have to deliver LAZ, classified LAZ tiles, and you shouldn't deliver the buffers. So the final tiles for delivery, the LAZ file. We do that on four cores. And again, I don't see my run button. I have to close the output directory. Run. And if I, if I want to fast now, it's OK because this step we're not going to use these files for anything. I already removed the buffers of the unnormalized ones. So now I want to do the same thing for the normalized ones. Of course, I need to pick an output folder. And as I mentioned just now, I didn't create this output folder ahead of time. So we have to create it ourselves. And maybe we will call that one um, two tiles height unbuffered. To create a new directory, you just type the name of the directory that you want to create down here. Notice I always use these underscores. I do not use spaces. We use spaces traditionally to separate uh, parameters from each other. So if you press the Create button, and now you can just go into that folder and use it as the output folder and press use current. And we can do that on all the cores we have. And of course, need to select the right option. Remove the buffer points. And that's it, except now I don't see my run button again. Here's my run button. Start. And I always use the opportunity this window gives me to review the command line as input. I have the tiles height, and I remove 
copper, one four cores. I put this into that new output directory I just created in the LASF console. 